All right, I want to take a few minutes here to answer this ridiculous video. This woman, I've never even heard of these people. Uh, I've been out of modern churchianity for many, many years now. I uh, got saved out of it. I was a professing Christian for up until the time I was 26, and then I actually got born again, uh, truly saved by uh, understanding the true gospel as recorded in the King James Bible, not the New Versions. Uh, you can watch some of my videos on that. But uh, this woman here epitomizes what a real atheist is all about. Let me show you from the scriptures here. Psalm 14, verse 1, The fool hath said in his heart, There is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. All right? This woman here is a con artist. Did things, ignores what the scriptures say, uh, part of very false religion, and then gets angry at God because things doesn't go, don't go her way. Um, this this epitomizes what the vast majority of atheists are. I have no problem with agnostics, people that just say, I don't know, I'm asking questions, I, you know, I'm scared off by organized religion. That just proves that you have common sense. Um, but when you have somebody like this that's a, a God-hating atheist that goes in and they do everything wrong, and then they blame God because things don't go right in their life. So let's watch a little bit of this. I'm going to go through the video here. In order to belong into this in this tribe you have to conform and if you have doubts you're a dangerous person how many leaders have been built up in uh, if you have doubts you're a dangerous person um, no uh, if you have doubts you don't be in ministry like this okay and and, and as far as doubts you know I'll say this uh, any Christian is going to have doubts absolutely but the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth so there's no problem with Bible believers asking questions among themselves and things like that, but... And these mega churches that fall because the pressure is just too much. And as I look back, we were two kids like trying so hard to get it right. My name is Lisa Gunger. I am a recent author. Wow. She's uh, trying so hard to get it right. They were trying so hard to get it right. Well, that's the problem. It's called self-righteousness. Uh, it's not the Holy Spirit working through you. It's they're trying to make their little system work. Let's continue. Author, I'm a musician and a songwriter. My mom and I found this wild church. They called themselves the Holy Rollers, and from the moment you walked in, it was loud. People were like running around the church. I just think it's awesome. So while <laughs> I just think it's awesome to have this this charismatic church that bla basically blasphemes the Holy Spirit of God that makes a mockery out of the Bible. I think it'd be so cool. You know, I think it's great. Okay, problem number one there. All right, anybody with any common sense walk into a charismatic Bible building and they're going to say, whoa, okay, these people are possessed. This is terrible, you know, but it's cool though. It's great. Yeah, continue. A lot of people think it's crazy, filled with crazy people. I, I loved it yeah. and I was in. I ended up going to college and I start dating this boy who's like super Christian. We get married really young. We're too young to even rent a car when we're married. We didn't drink or cuss. So we end up getting a job at a really big church in Michigan. And this... Uh, why did they get a job at a really big church in Michigan? Uh, why were they hired? Um, Bible warns about novices. You know, and, and how do you get a woman pastor and things too, by the way, there's plenty of scriptures against that. First Corinthians chapter 14, First Timothy chapter 2. Don't follow the Bible. Do what you want to do, your own thing, and then blame God when things go wrong. Church was the size of a mall. I mean, it's huge. There's about 10,000 people. We mm -hmm. built a house out in the country. They paid for our car, for our gas. They paid for Michael's school. We were 20 years old, and we had this, this dream job. We didn't have sex with each other before we were married. We waited to kiss. We did it all right. We had this transactional idea of God, and that's why we landed this really great, awesome job. We started trying to get pregnant. Transactional relationship with God. Okay, that was false. <laughs> you know, again, why are you getting upset at the Lord? You did things, you're, you're living a lie. You know? And you get a church of 10,000 people, it's not going to be real. It's going to be false. Pregnant, and you couldn't get pregnant. 
and people would tell me, but just pray and believe, like, just say it and it will happen. And I thought, I just don't know how that can be true. We were traveling the world, we were going overseas and playing to sometimes 60,000 people in arenas. The more we ran into other people's stories, the more we started doubting what we'd been given. And Michael and I took this trip in Europe from Rome. We took trains up to Krakow. We visited the concentration camps. We walked through the crematoriums. And it's real hard to come back to America and pray for something when you have these images of people's hair in piles and children's shoes in piles. Your ideas on what a good God is can change pretty dramatically. Okay. <laughs> so God did the Holocaust, apparently. God was behind that. Uh, yeah, okay. It's just it's typical atheist stuff. Just these atheists are such fools, just like the Bible says. They're corrupt, they're abominable. Now, see, see, the whole thing is here, this woman was never a Christian. She was an atheist. She's been an atheist her whole life. Just incredible. Continue. So I came back and, and found myself trying to pray for us to have a baby or pray for our church or pray for these different things. And I just kept thinking about the concentration camp and how my whole perspective on my faith has been a transaction. If I'm good enough or if I pray enough, if I believe enough. Uh, see, see, again, it's all about her. It's all about what she's doing. It's called self-righteousness. And atheists will live, they'll try to do the self-righteousness thing for a while, and then they just say, and I'm fed up with it. And then instead of saying, you know what, maybe I need to look at the righteousness of Jesus Christ and admit to being a wicked sinner, and that I'm no good in and of myself, instead of doing that, they blame God for their problems and for the problems of the world. When God gives man a free will, then I get blessings and I get a baby or a good life. It's not how life is. We all have this perspective on who was in and who was out. For Michael and I, that began to change slowly. You have to conform, and if you have doubts, you're a dangerous person. I remember looking around going, what am I doing here? What am I building with my life? We realize we're no good for this place that we're at because our ideas have changed so much and that we needed to leave. I started weeping and crying and freaking out, going, what are we doing? We don't know what we're doing. Do you realize what we just left? Like we left all of our security and we started becoming heretics, you know. We go to Denver, we end up starting a little house church in our apartment. Our whole goal for it was that it was inclusive and that it was vulnerable and that it was this place that we had always dreamed of church being. More questions and more doubt uh, were arising for Michael and I. Our like heretic levels kept like shifting and changing and like kind of one up in each other. <laughs> Eventually Michael and I, we get pregnant and I was really glad for that because it didn't feel like our daughter was this answer, right? Like we really went through this trial and this suffering and now we're getting this baby girl. Our ideas of God are deconstructing. What is it that we still believe? But Michael looks at me and just says, I. I don't believe in God anymore. Like, I can't believe any of it. And he just ends up, like, talking more. And I, I remember just, like, freezing in my whole body. Because there's always been, I was okay with the questions, but I wasn't okay with, with that. I end up getting pregnant again. But again, you know, what's the difference between these people and lost people this whole time? They look like lost people. They're doing things that lost people do. They're playing church. That's the whole thing. There's no personal relationship with Jesus Christ there. You know, I'm going to show you a scripture here real quickly. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. This is a very key scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. And you're going to see the sorrow of the world coming up here. There's no godly sorrow. There's no, I've sinned against a holy, righteous God. Nothing there. And what is the problem? There's no godly sorrow. That's why it says here, not to be repented of. 
right there, not to be repented of. Repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. In other words, once you turn to the Lord and you truly get born again, you're not going to turn away from the Lord ever again. They never had salvation. They were faking it the whole time. Just like a lot of atheists do. They're fakes, they're frauds. And actually, you know, when you get right down to it, atheists don't really believe in evolution either. Uh, they are their own little gods. They're in their own little world. Uh, just uh, lovers of their own selves, as the Bible says. And when I say they don't believe in evolution, they don't believe in truly carrying it out. Because if they believed in evolution, then there was nothing wrong with what Hitler did. See, evolution, there's no morals in evolution. And they'll pretend, well, yeah, that was, you know, wrong, that what Hitler did and things. But, uh, but you know, uh, why was it wrong? See, evolutionists, and, or I shouldn't say, well, evolutionists, but atheists are the biggest hypocrites on the planet. Uh, they deserve the title fool that the Bible gives them. Let's continue. And we go through a whole tour with me being pregnant. And for Michael, he feels all this freedom in a going through a whole tour with her being with child is the Bible term there. Um, loud music is very, very damaging to a child in the womb. But it, but it was God's fault, you know, that you'll see what's coming up here. Atheism, because he's not struggling anymore. For me, I'm feeling... Uh, and they're, they're going on tour and making money off of people while the guy's an atheist. But they're, they're, they're good people. They're on a journey here. They're, they're stealing people's money. They're corrupt. They're abominable. All that this video is proving is how sick and disgusting atheists really are. Continue. And all this anxiety because I want him to believe a certain thing. And I want myself to believe a certain thing. And, we're, and I'm still just struggling hard to belong and to be okay. And I ended up having to quit a tour early because I'm having, our baby's having difficulty growing. She's born a month and a half early. She's just beautiful. And like with our first daughter, we're both crying. It's just this beautiful, beautiful moment. And, and then she turns blue. I remember this nurse coming over and she's like shaking and looking really worried. And she tells us our daughter has Down syndrome. And so then the days that follow, we find out that Lucy has two heart issues and she has to have heart surgery that her second day of life and then she has to have another heart surgery when she's six months old. Everything really changed for me. So I feel like this story that I've been living my whole life kind of came to this climax with Lucy's birth. When Lucy was born, we had this huge social media blow up um, and there's stories in magazines and um, all over the internet about our heresy and we were completely pushed out of the church world of this tribe that we really loved and really painful and devastating. <laughs> tribe that we really loved. <laughs> yeah. You know, and again, uh, she gets bitter at God because they have a child with Down syndrome. Um, never asking the question, uh, what caused the Down syndrome? See, atheists will be quick to say, well, it's, uh, it's genetic, it's just genetic, it's just genetic. Okay, well, let's, let's just leave God out of the picture for just a minute. What was the nutrition like being on tour? Home-cooked meals? You know, raw food, whole food diet or something? I highly doubt that. What about the loud noise? That's extremely damaging to a child in the womb. What about the stress? What about all these things, all these factors? What about all that stuff? And yet you blame God. That their child is born that way, with Down syndrome. They are corrupt. They are abominable. You see? She's a fool. An atheistic fool. Just disgusting. And, and you know, the atheist watches and, oh, you're so brave to come out against the organized religion. <laughs> brave. Yeah, please. Give me a break. I've been it so many times. Looking back on all of it, I'm deeply grateful for all of the things that happened. And I don't want what we used to have. We live in a different headspace now. It's a completely different perspective. And the, the yeah, completely different perspective. Oh, you mean you can sin without any kind of, you know, conviction or 
uh, any kind of conscience about it or anything, you know. Yeah, that's that's the whole thing. That's all atheism has to offer people. You can get into, once you become an atheist and you remove God, there is no God anymore. Now you can live like a wicked, vile pervert all you want and do whatever. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Thank you, Aleister Crowley or any other atheist. The connection I feel with my daughters, there's no us versus them. There's no you and I. There's no winners and losers. Part of my dream is that people wouldn't be so afraid and so scared. I know a lot of people are still in this very conservative. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. But why bother quoting scripture, you know? Right, they're in this very conservative thing here. Fundamental bubble and... <laughs> Fundamental bubble? Fundamental bubble. <laughs> you give me a break. Oh, it's just so ridiculous, you know? If the sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The truth sets you free. She's the one in bondage. What, what good is sin in your life? A servant to sin? Oh, but that's that's freedom. Freedom, yeah, sure, right. And they can be so afraid to break out of that from fear of what will happen to their lives. And this can this happens in any religion. So my dream is that we're not so afraid. <laughs> Anyhow, I guess that's it. It just again, you know these atheists are just such stinking hypocrites. I mean, it's amazing. You know, uh, no problem at all conning people, stealing people's money. There was a, a video I did a while back on this. There was another one, Tim Lambesis, another uh, contemporary Christian heavy metal guy or something like this. And, and he was an atheist, you know, going around and then he decided to hire a hitman to kill his ex-wife and, and uh, you know, this, uh, Fruit Loop by Bill Maher or whatever came out and he was all oh, Christians, you know, look at this Christian rocker, you know, trying to kill his wife. No, actually, I was an atheist the whole time, you know. There are a lot of atheists in the modern church system, a whole lot of them. And they're just waiting for the right little moment where they can get bitter at God and then just say, I don't believe in God anymore, <laughs> you know. So just thought I would do a real quick video on this. It's just absurd. But again, it shows the moral character of an atheist. Uh, they are fools, they are corrupt, and they are abominable. Thank you for watching.